Okay, so welcome to this video. We're going to have a look at volume of a composite solid. So if you want to pause the video and have a go at this question, please feel free to do so. But otherwise, I'm just going to show you where you can find more videos related to this topic inside the video. So when you're on one of these videos, if you click into the description, you'll see that I've got everything listed within there. I've got hard questions to try, I've got checklists and practice papers that you can download, and other questions and other videos within this series. Now if you scroll down to the bottom of the description, you'll see down there it says topics featured in this video. So in there I'll put all the links with difficult questions and topic videos related to this topic right there for you to access. So just click onto one of those and it'll take you on to more practice questions and different versions of this topic. So with that being said, Let's get started. Okay, so looking at this question. So what we have is a cuboid with a triangular prism sitting on top, and we can see that in the diagram. We have the dimensions of the cuboid, but we only have that 40 degree angle in the front cross section of that triangular prism. Now the question here says, the cross section of the prism has exactly one line of symmetry. So we know that that's just going straight down the middle there, which is helpful as it does tell us that that angle of 40 degrees will be the same on the other side and therefore it's an isosceles triangle. And we'll come back to that in just a moment. It says work out the volume of the prism, give your answer correct to three significant figures. So we are gonna be using a calculator for this question and let's go ahead and get started. So to find the volume of any prism, you have to find the area of the cross section and times it by the depth or the length that it goes through the shape. So in the case of this particular prism, we have this whole part here being our cross section. So we need to work out the area of that shape. Now we don't have to do that in one go, and that's what a composite solid is, it's made up of two different shapes. So we'll start off by thinking what is the area of that cuboid, um, the, the cross section of the cuboid. So we have a rectangular face on the front, we've got a height of 12 and a base of 10. So to work out the area of that we could just do nice and easy, 12 times 10, and that is 120, and the units for that would be centimetres squared. Now, I'm not going to worry about writing the units in, um, because we still need to work out the area of the triangle. So for the area of the triangle, let's think what we need. Well, to get the area of a triangle, we just want to do base times height divided by 2. Of course, we could do other things like potentially using half a, b, sine c, and things like that as we have a calculator, but I'm just gonna work right, try and work it out. So we have the base, which is 10, but we don't have the height. So that angle of 40 is gonna help us to find the height. So let's just get rid of that 10 for just a moment, and let's split this down the middle. So now that I've split it down the middle, we have a right angle triangle on the left and on the right. So I could use Sokotoa to work out the height. There are other things I could potentially do to try and get that slanted length as well, and then use half a, b, sine c. But I think in this particular question, I'd prefer to go with just using some normal Sokotoa. So half of that base would be five on each side. So the base of that right angle triangle is five. Now we could draw this to the side so that I can see it a little bit clearer, but we have an angle of 40. This is our right angle, five on the bottom, and we wanna work out this side here. So to work that out, we'd label it up. This is the opposite, and this is the adjacent. We don't have the hypotenuse, so we're gonna use tan. So T-O-A, and of course, you don't have to use Sokotoa triangles, but I'm gonna use it for this question. So to work out the opposite, we'll cross off the opposite, and we're gonna do tan times the adjacent. So that's tan 40 times the adjacent, or we could write that the other way around as five tan 40. So in my calculator, I'm going to type in 5 tan 40, and that gives me an answer of 4.195. There are a few more decimals there. It says to give it to three significant figures, so I'm going to give it to five just to go a little bit further than what the question's asking for just now. Remember, with a calculator question like this, we want to make sure, ideally, 
we put all the decimals down, but we can get away with just going a few beyond it. So 4.19549, the next number's an eight, then a one. So I'm gonna round it, or, well, I'm gonna write the decimals up to a point where I don't have to worry about the rounding. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven significant figures there. That's gonna be definitely enough to make sure I get this as accurate as possible as, cause, as it's asking for three significant figures. So there's the height of the triangle. So I've got 4.195, just label this here, 498. So I can get rid of all this working out. There we go. Obviously, when you're doing these questions, don't get rid of your working out. But to save this being all over the screen, we'll just get rid of it. So there we go. We have the height of the triangle. So now I can work out the area of the triangle because I can do half base times height. Now I already know half the base, which is five. I'm gonna write the full formula out anyway. So a half times 10 times 4.195498. Okay, so now I have half base times height, so I can type that in on my calculator and I get the answer for the area of the triangle, which comes out as 20 point nine seven seven and it's four nine zero so I'll just put four nine for that so there is the area of the triangle so if we write this down the area of the triangle and I've also worked out the area of the rectangle which was 120 so we want to add those two together that's going to give us the area of the cross section so I'm just going to add 120 to my answer on the calculator and that gives me 140 point nine seven seven four nine so there we go that is the area of the cross section obviously we've had to think a little bit more about that because i've had to use sokotoa to get the area of the triangle but now i can just work out the volume because once i have the area of the cross section i multiply it by the depth and the depth is 20. so i'm just going to times that by 20. so again i've still got the answer on the calculator so i'm just going to press times 20 and that comes out as 2819 that's already four significant figures so i'm not going to have to write too many more or worry about rounding now so it goes five four nine i'm just going to write five four because i already know i'm going to round that to three significant figures which is after the one so the fact that that 54 would actually round to 55 is, is doesn't actually matter for us now so we have 2800 and that one is going to round up to two the rest turn into zeros so that's 2,820, and this we are gonna to wanna to give our units now. It's volume, so centimeters cubed. And there is the volume of our compound shape. So there we go, that's how we go about working out volume when we have these sorts of shapes involved. Hope that was useful and helpful. If it was, don't forget to like, don't forget to comment, don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you for the next one.